Hey guys, welcome to another video. In this video, I'm going to do a bit of an analysis of the Maths GCSC exam papers from 2017 uh, in order to give you an idea of which topics come up most often in the exams and how to prioritize your time when it comes to revision. Um, so what I've done is I've taken the exams from June and I've also looked at the exams from November 2017 as well. And I've looked at each question and taken the main topic that is involved in that question and taken the marks attributed to that question. So, uh, so you can see in this table, I've got the topics, the number of questions that that topic was involved with, and then the number of marks attributed to that topic. So if we look at the, the, um, the maths exams from June last year, May and June, they were, these are the official GCSE exams. I've written down all of the topics that were involved in the exams. The two main topics with the most marks were fractions, decimals and percentages and trigonometry. The reason I've grouped fractions, decimals and percentages together is because they're kind of three basic topics which often appear together. So if we look at paper two, which was on the 8th of June 2017, this was a calculator paper, and we look at question two from this paper, you can see here that it involves ratios, it involves fractions, and percentages as well. So often the question will involve a number of those different basic topics and, it, and put them all together into a worded question that kind of assesses a number of different skills. So that's why I've grouped those three things together. There are three basic topics which you need to master and they'll often be asked in one larger question. Trigonometry, uh, what I mean by trigonometry is the, the trigonometric ratio, so finding the, the sine of an angle based on the side lengths of a triangle. You also need to know formulas for areas involving the cosine and the sine rules. There were three questions involving algebraic fractions and in total the marks for those questions added up to 11. There were four questions on probability so overall probability was involved in the most number of questions however the total marks for those questions only added up to 10. Pythagoras was involved in two questions and that was worth nine marks. Uh, there were questions on linear equations and graphs. There were three questions in, and in total the marks added up to nine. There were questions involving area, so either area of triangles or circles or finding the area of a sector. And there was two questions involved with that topic in, for a total of nine marks. There was questions on graphing quadratics, simultaneous equations in standard form, etc. So what I want to get to with this analysis is to kind of give you an idea of which topics are most likely to come up in the exams and which topics maybe might come up in the exams or might not. Um, and I've also done this for the November exams, which were the reset exams. And one thing I want to point out with these, these two sets of exams is you can see the marks for the topics in the in the June exams, which were kind of the more official exams, the marks are much more balanced. So there's no kind of standout topic. I mean, there's the, the larger topics which are getting the most marks, but it's pretty evenly spread. Whereas if you compare that to the recent exams in November, there were five questions on area and perimeter, like geometry questions, and they were worth 21 marks. And you can see there's three topics at the top here that were kind of worth the majority of the marks. And that's, I would say, is more of an imbalance in terms of which topics are getting the most marks. So you can think of the June exams as a more balanced spread of the marks and the November exams with a bit of a more of an imbalance in terms of which topics are getting the most marks. Now, what this is useful for is to think about how to prioritize your time when it comes to revision. Uh, so let's go down to the bottom of this list and let's look at something like uh, histograms. So there was one question on histograms in the June GCSEs and it was worth three marks. Now histograms is a topic that 
may or may not come up in the exams in 2018. So if you're thinking about revision and what to spend your time revising, you would say that it is important to revise histograms, but is it more important than practicing questions on trigonometry? I would say not. So if you haven't mastered histograms, don't spend a week, don't spend all of your time in one week just practicing question, questions on histograms because that's not going to pay off in terms of marks in the exam. What would pay off is to do some revision on histograms, of course, but spend more time on things like trigonometry and algebraic fractions, which is going to give you more marks in the exam. Let's look at some other topics. So sequences, this is a difficult topic, but it's one that may or may not turn up in the exams. So again, it's a topic that takes time to master and you could spend a good two weeks on this one topic just revising sequences. However, leading up to the exams, I would say that's not a good use of your time. Uh, again, and another one that may or may not come up is cumulative frequency and cumulative frequency graphs. And uh, what I'm trying to get at is, of course, you need to have a good understanding of all of these topics in the specification. So if you're aiming for the eight and the nine, you, you don't want to lose these two or three or four mark questions. However, you also, while you're revising, you also need to be constantly giving attention to these other topics, which you may feel confident with, but it kind of needs to be on the on the top of your brain, you know, the tip of your tongue. You need to be able to be really familiar with all these different concepts in order to be able to answer these questions quickly. The one thing that I'm surprised by is that probability, there were four questions on probability in the June exam papers and five questions on probability in the November exam papers. So you can guarantee yourself that there will be at least three, four or five questions involving probability in the exams in 2018. So spending time practicing questions on probability is a really good use of your time that you can guarantee there'll be questions on that and you can guarantee yourself at least 10 to 15 marks there. So let's have a look at a, a closer look at some of the topics in the November exams. Uh, you can see that area and perimeter, as I said already, they were worth 21 marks. Uh, ratios, there were four questions involving ratios adding up to 14 marks. And there were two questions, there was one involving a distance time graph and one involving a speed time graph. Um, and they, for a total of 12 marks. But I'd say that's a bit unusual. I wouldn't say there'd be that many marks on this topic in, in the 2018 exam because it's not the most important topic in GCSEs. And I wouldn't say they want people to be revising, you know, distance time graphs over things like trigonometry. Compound interest is another important topic. Uh, the, there was two questions in the November papers and I believe there was two questions in the June papers. So there will be questions, at least one or two, on compound interest in the exams in 2018 and probably there'll be five to ten marks involved in those questions. So compound interest is another important topic to practice. Direct and inverse proportion, let me give you an example of what I mean by direct and inverse proportion. Things like exchange rates where you're given um, in this paper, in this question, they have said, you know, one gallon of petrol is worth 3.785 litres and one pound is worth $1.46. And you need to compare those to find which is better value. Uh, things like that involving proportions, that they come up a lot. So in the November exams, there was three questions involving direct and inverse proportion for nine marks in total. Again, fractions, decimals, percentages, they came up in four questions. It's really important you're able to quickly and easily use your understanding of fractions, decimals, percentages in, in lots of different contexts. Iterations, there was one question on iterations worth nine marks. So 
we saw a question on iterations in the June exams, they came up again in the November exams, maybe that's a clue that there will be a question on iterations in the exams for 2018. So there may or may not be a question on it, but you can probably, if there is a question, you can probably guarantee that it'll be a good five to 10 marks involved there. Nonlinear graphs, what I mean by that is things like circles and the graphs of trigonometric functions and things like that. So let me give you an example of that. So, so question 20 from paper one from the November exams involved the a table of values for this equation uh, involving the cosine function and you had to find a value for y when x equals 45. Um, so this isn't really a, a graph but it, it's using a table of functions similar to a graph and you can see here that this isn't a typical question that you would practice every day. This is a difficult question, a high level question and they've tried to throw a curveball at you and, and tried to find a question you may not have seen before, but it's an application of topics that you should be confident with. And that's what they're going to try to do in the exams in 2018. They're going to take these topics which you should have an understanding of and try to form questions which you haven't seen before and you have to apply your knowledge of those topics. One suggestion I have for your revision is to try to go out of your way to find problems which push your understanding and, and challenge your problem solving skills. Inequalities will probably come up in the exams. Being able to graph inequalities and be able to solve equations involving inequalities is an important skill. Linear equations and graphs, that's a really important skill. So being able to graph linear equations, being able to find the midpoint, being able to find the dis distance between two points, um, being able to prove that two lines are parallel, they all come under that topic of linear equations. Indices is a topic which I believe is pretty easy to revise because there's not too many different questions they usually give in these exams. They usually just involve the basic index laws. I've done a video on index laws if you want to check that out. Um, but once you master those index laws, you can guarantee there'll be at least one question on it worth maybe three or four marks. Box plots may or may not come up, but if they do come up, there's probably four or five marks there. Error intervals and lower and upper bounds could come up, or they may be involved in other larger questions. So you might have to find the lower and upper bounds to prove you know, the maximum value or the, the minimum value of a particular problem. Again, histograms came up in the November exams. So maybe this is a clue that histograms will appear in the 2018 exams. Again, only one question worth five marks. There might be one question on sequences worth five marks, four or five marks, and also vectors. There might be one question on vectors worth, you know, a good five marks. So as I said before, the, November, the marks in the November papers were not as well balanced as the marks in the June papers. And I'd say the official exams in 2018, the June exams, will probably be more like this where the marks are more balanced. Um, and you can guarantee if you've mastered these key topics, you should guarantee yourself a good chunk of the marks. And, but if you're aiming for that 8 and that 9, you obviously need to be mastering all of the different topics, even the ones that might not come up in the exams because they've got that option of picking, picking and choosing which ones to include. So for example, circle theorems. There's the th circle theorems that you need to memorize. You might spend a lot of time memorizing and mastering those, but it might not come up in the exam. You never know. However, if it does come up, there could be one question involving three, four, or even five marks that if you don't revise the circle theorems, you'll lose those marks. Another one I want to point out was uh, there was a question on pie charts in the November exams. Now, pie charts is a topic which we kind of were familiar with from primary school. You know, you, you first encounter pie charts in grades six and seven, but pie charts is something that can involve areas of circles, angles in circles, areas of sectors, 
a circumference of a circle, there's lots of different topics that can be involved in a question on pie charts. Now whether they pull out a question on pie charts, we just don't know. However, you need to be familiar with those kind of core topics, those basic topics, just in case they stick one in there. I guess what I'm trying to say is that in terms of prioritizing which topics to revise for, spend the majority of the time on the topics which you know will be in the exams, things like trigonometry, you know there'll be, there'll be questions involving trigonometry and the cosine rule, the sine rule, things like that. You know there'll be questions involving fractions, decimals and percentages. You know there'll be at least three questions on probability. Make sure you're spending a good chunk of your time on those key topics. Also make sure you're making time for all of the other topics that may or may not appear. Things like scatter graphs may or may not appear. However, that's a pretty easy topic. You don't need to spend too much time on that. Again, Venn diagrams may or may not come up. They had one question on Venn diagrams worth six marks. So you do need to be able to do questions on Venn diagrams, but don't spend all of your time mastering that topic. What I'm trying to say is, let's say you're revising one hour per night. I know that's for some of you maybe a lot of time, others that maybe not as much time as you are spending on it, but let's say you have one hour per night. Let's say you wanna split that time up into practicing revising different subjects. Make sure you spend some time on those key topics like algebraic fractions, trigonometry, probability. Let's say you make sure you practice at least one problem on probability and then maybe you're not too confident with say histograms. So you stick one question on histograms in your revision and one question on transformations and then you need to go back and make sure you spend some time on algebraic fractions. So every night make sure you include some questions on the key topics and then stick some other questions from the less common topics to make sure you're staying familiar with those as well. I hope this analysis has been helpful to you. I hope what I was trying to say made some kind of sense. You can do this yourself. You can get the six papers and sit down and have a look at which, which topics get the most marks, which topics to revise, and keep in mind which topics you're most confident with and which topics you think you need more practice with and spend your time on those accordingly. So yeah, as I said, I hope this was helpful. Leave a like if you did appreciate this video. If you want to see more content from this channel, subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.